Hello everyone, and welcome to what will be the finale this week for our pre-KubeCon podcast series. We are the Stormforge Fireside Podcast. I am your co-host, Noah Abrahams, open source advocate here at Stormforge. My co-host as well. Cody Crudgington. And with us today, the one, the only, Pop. You know, I told I told myself I would never go on any fireside chats, but because I love you both and I'm such a huge fan of Stormforge, that's why I'm on here. But the term fireside chat is a trigger word for me. Trigger word. Just want to let you know. But I love you both. We know it. So appreciate you uh, putting all that aside to come on. (laughs) And your company is from Massachusetts. Come on. I mean, look, (laughs) see how much I love you, fellas. I'll take you to a Red Sox game. Okay, moving on. (laughs) So uh, all this week, we've been talking with people about, uh, about pain points, about how they solve problems, about how they approach solutions. Um, but the podcast isn't a vendor. The podcast isn't selling things to people. The podcast is bringing it to the masses for free. So let's, let's talk about what drives it. Let's talk about how you got started on that. What, what motivated the podcast and how you, how you ended up being one of the premier voices in the cloud native space. I think it's pretty much what I did prior as like, you know, I was field TTO with the company Cystic and I was able to be in, you know, I was able to kind of um, be in front of customers. And also I did a ton of community stuff, like in terms of like, you know, there was a Kubernetes meetup in New York. And so I got involved from that perspective. And I just loved being like talking to people, not about the, you know, we, there, everybody has pain points. We talked about that, but it was more of, Hey, got to know this person. This person's the developer. They did X, Y, and Z. People come to meet up and they had like a new like solution that they came out and they were so energized and pumped to talk about it. And so I'm like, okay, well, COVID hits and I can't do that anymore. And it pissed me off and I'm in my basement, as you see here, this wonderful basement here. And, uh, and I'm like, you know, I miss connecting with people. And the first couple of shows was literally just me talking to a couple of my friends I talked to the founder of Sysdig, Loris, the first couple episodes, my best friend, he works at Zendesk, Josh Teitelbaum, shout out to you, dude, was on my first episode. And we talked about, you know, development. And then we talked about like, if you all remember like New York Seltzer, it was a seltzer company. And it, we, and so we just talked about like, there was this like lifestyles of the rich and famous. And by the way, first episode, I mean, there's no production value whatsoever in it, but, um, <laughs> but it was funny. Cause like the guy's like going around the office and there's like, he's got like a Bengal tiger and he's walking around the office with the Bengal tiger. And we, so we break down the video. You all should watch. It was good. But they had fun. And then by like the fourth or fifth episode I was like okay I kind of find my groove and I was like you know this what what I wanted this to do is always be connecting the human behind the code because it's so much more interesting to understand why you know Matt Prova from 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 Stormforge did what he did the things that he did why Kelsey did that talk why you know he when he met his you know when he he was you know courting his his future wife you know, on his round two, this is the reason why, you know, like, this is the things that he did. And you get to, you get to get understand people better. So that's kind of why I started it. Yeah. Do you think, so you brought up COVID and you brought up like not being able to be around your friends. Is it far fetched to say that by doing the podcast, you were actually solving a personal pain point for yourself? Oh, without a doubt, man. I was, I was miserable. I'm going to be honest with you, like from a personal perspective, I'm like, I missed, ha- dude, I miss hanging out with you. You know what I mean? Like, like, so let's be honest. Like, Cody, I mean, we, we had a lot great. of great times together. I mean, you know what I mean? Like a lot, like, you know, a lot of the friends I have, you know, Steven and others. Right. And, you know, like the way that I see it is, is, you know, it was definitely something that, that was, you know, a, a, a pain that, uh, you know, trying to address, but like, it's also been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life by far besides having my, ch- my children obviously and marry my wife but you know besides that well besides yeah that. and obviously yeah. it's been quite successful so congratulations on that thank you and again it's i 
it's the community that's been behind it, but also my just everybody that's been supportive and you all have been supportive of me since jump in so many ways, mm -hmm. not just like sponsoring the show, but just supportive of me and just saying, oh, pop, you're doing a great job. And, and, and also just, you know, telling people about it. And that makes, that means more to me than anything. And you know, I'd do anything for you both. So. Oh, I'm heartbroken. <laughs> so. Uh, how do and with I... that, I got to go. See y'all. Okay. Well, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me wipe my eye real quick. Right there. Let's tear right there. Um, I'm trying to think of how do I want to really, I have a question, but I'm trying to think of how to phrase it. Um, do you think that as we're try trying to tie this into people solving their pain points, or in this case, probably more of filling needs is probably a better way than solving pain points, probably a better way to describe it. Uh, do you think that the folks that are coming on your show are, I mean, they're, they're obviously going to be filling some sort of need for themselves, but do you think that the show itself is leading into other solutions that are coming out? Or do you think that do you think that the the presence of the show itself is is more of a solution than than what people are bringing? Like, are people bringing a lot of marketing presence and they want to try and push things through the show, or do you think the show is really the destination? I think it's either or. If somebody wants to, like, you know, kind of um, promote something they're doing. They're kind of, you, you know, uh, utilizing the podcast to do that, which is awesome. And I appreciate that. But it's also like, you know, I have folks that come on that like really do want to kind of have you understand, you know, what they do, like, you know, in, in a way that's not just me going on and doing like, you know, a demo, demo and doing a talk or whatever. It's like I'm having this 30 minute conversation. And what I pride myself on is. I don't spend the whole interview talking about the product they have. I spend the first, uh, it's always the same sequence. It's always, and I, there, there's a reason for it. I want everybody to come into an episode, every episode they say, to see like, starts with the journey, gives the intro, does the journey, goes into, you know, some finer points of what the problem they were trying to tr solve with their tool or whatever going into this. Um, what do they like to do in their spare time, right? And then I always end with the same question. It's always, what work are you most proud of? And the reason why I do that is because people should have pride in what they've done. You know, Sarah Novotny should have absolute pride in that. Like everything we do as a community has to do with like the the, the ground root things that they've set that they they set. Um, so you know what I mean. Like so, like if it, it can go either way, and I'm like I said, I'm I'm pretty you know happy that I, you know I'm kind of a destination. Uh, the show, excuse me, is a destination for it. I love doing it. Like like this is to me has become like the the best thing that I I enjoy doing this a lot. A ton. Do you think that when people come on and share their stories, do you feel like it's almost a like a validation period for them where they're like reaffirming what they're doing and and just getting that 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 I, I don't know, but kind of like a here I am, this is what I do, this is why I'm doing it, you know like it or not, this is what you get. I, I think a lot of folks are humble and they're not going to tell you like, Hey, I did this and this. Like I had the guy, the person who created curl curl on and super humble, you know, and just Daniel's uh, great episode. It's again at Popcast pop. If you all want to check it out on Twitter, they'll see all the links to the show, but basically like, you know, and he was talking about, you know, he won these couple awards, like math awards that nobody knows about, but he was super proud of him. So we started talking about that. You know, I was like, you're for Sweden. So you have a bunch of Ikea furniture, right? Like just, you know, busting <laughs> his balls. Right. But like, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I, I, I hope they get that, but look, I'm, you know, I'm not a psychologist, you know what I mean? I'm not here to kind of, you know, validate like what's going on. What I am here to do is to, su is to support my listeners and my watchers. I want them to understand that there's more to this person. Julius Valls from Prometheus, there was more to this person than the fact that he came up with a bunch of exporters, right? There's more to the Stormforge founder, like Matt Provo, he did all the things that he did, you know, with Coney and all that great stuff, right? I want people to know that, like, you want people to like, really root for people. Like when I, the, one of the things, like I said, when like Augustus was on the first time, 
somebody came and I included that in the retrospective that we did. Um, uh, so basically, you know, the person was like, look, I mean, this person was so wonderful. It was the, be the best podcast I've ever listened to total was just listen to Steven. We all love Steven. You know, Steven is, is great. Right. So having more people out there understand like, you know, who he is. And that to me is, is rewarding for me, everybody here, like, you know, you know, Noah's going to be on next week, right? Like having folks understand how awesome this dude is, like, is, is, is like, then I'm doing my job well, right? So that's kind of what it is. So you say you're, you just explicitly said, I'm not a psychologist. But my next question is sort of a psychological one. Do you think that there is, um, as part of it being a, a destination for build, people to go and talk about things. Um, do you think stepping back from the work and talking about the people sort of gets you away from that day to day where we just get lost in the grind where we're going, oh look, another meeting, another PR, another whatever it is that we got to go through and being able to step back and say, now I understand a little bit about more about the people in the process of stepping back, do you think people are, are learning more about the ecosystem, about the environment, about the solutions, about how people are solving things, about pain points? I don't wanna keep beating that particular phrase, but I wanna bring it back to that. It, do you think that getting away from it and making it human gives you something that is, you know, oh, now I've stepped back. I'm outside the box. I can look at it from a different direction. Absolutely. <clears throat> if you think about like, I just had Vile on. Vile was one of the, like the original creators of, of Kubernetes, right? Nobody knew, nobody knows about it, a, a lot about him. You hear about Craig and you hear about Beta and you hear about Brandon Burns, right? But like having him on and telling his side of the story of like having fights about like not fights, but discussions about like, you know, the, you know, some of the storage and underlying networking stuff with Hawk and getting that underlying things and you piece all that jigsaw puzzle together is kind of cool. And then for the listener, right, if they've if they're a longtime listener or, you know, subscriber to the show, like they, they can kind of also go back and go, oh, let me go and listen to the Godfather's episode, which I call the Godfathers of Kubernetes, right? Because they're the creators of it. And then now we have the silent Godfather, which adds even more to the story. Still have to get Brian Grant. Brian Grant, if you're listening, I'd love to have you on the show. But basically like, you know, the way that are watching, excuse me. So like the way that I see it again, if it's a cathartic thing for somebody listening, I love that. Like it's, it's, it, that's useful, but like, that's not what I'm planning to do show. What my plan, my plan is for the show is for folks to be entertained, but also to understand, have that connection. Wow. You know, maybe there's a founder out there that listened to, you know, Provo story. It's going to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. If that's inspirational to that person or, you know, somebody out there listened to Stephen Augustus' story and says, oh, you know what, I want to go ahead and be a part of ContribX because I love the fact he explained every, to the umph degree, exactly what all of the, like what Basil is and all this fun stuff. To me, that's awesome, right? That I, Then I've done a service to the community. Did I answer your question? I think you did. All right. I think you did. So there's a lot. There's so many different people, so many different aspects what's going to happen at KubeCon? what can you tell us so again um the week before KubeCon, we have seven shows in seven days you all uh and you're a part of it right so next week i want you all to check it out please at podcast pop okay check it out we have a bunch of i cannot tell you names but i'll tell you one of them it's big reveal noah abrahams is on that one of those days big reveal all right only here uh, KubeCon, look, uh, for the first time, I'm co-chairing two co-located events. I'm really excited about uh, eBPF Day. I love that. This is a great story. I pull, you know, I was talking to Thomas Graf, um, talking a little bit to some other folks. And, and I went to, actually, before I went to Chris Anacek, I'm like, Chris, we should think about doing a cloud native eBPF. So we can talk about all the projects that are using eBPF and use it as a mechanism for folks to see the benefit of eBPF. If you all don't know, it's enhanced Berkeley packet filtering tool. It's basically like almost like a helper into the kernel without you having to contribute directly to the kernel. Great piece of code, right? Or great, great pro, uh, set of protocols. But anyway, so 
taking that and having like a talks all day that talk about the networking piece, the troubleshooting piece, the security piece from all of these different angles where like, it's going to be at practical hands-on folks talking about debugging applications. So somebody comes out of that, they have a tool tools kit that they come out and say, cool, I can do this. And another big reveal, I will be co I'm seeing with one of our best friends, right? Duffy Cooley. So we'll co nice. him and I will be, We'll be emceeing that. I'm really excited about it. Liz was actually supposed to um, coach, uh, co MC with me, but she couldn't because of obviously couldn't come into the country. So that's that. Tag security is another one. Uh, the, uh, the technical advisory group used to be SIG security, right? Um, we're doing, you know, a, a, a co-located event as well um, that I was event, uh, event lead with um, Emily Fox and uh andres vega and this amazing program committee and it is literally soup to nuts all the great security tools that are out there amazing talks and user talks really excited about that and then beyond that cloud native tv every day is going to do a recap and i'm really excited about that because i am going to be doing um a recap on day one with all of the keynote speakers hopefully coming by the booth we're gonna we actually have a booth set up outside the thing that we're broadcasting outside of that we're going to be doing recaps every single day. So it's, it's, it's awesome stuff. Um, KubeCon to me, I'm really excited to be on, on prem, but I'm tell you the one thing that I'm really excited about. And I want the people, you know, Constance Carmolis, Steven, Jasmine, being able to actually present their keynotes in real time in front of people. It's a freaking travesty. They have not been able to, in front of people, be able to deliver their keynote. You, you know how it's just, it makes me so, if they wouldn't have been able to do this this year, I would have been so sad. So I literally might have tears in my eyes. I'm going to be right in that front row, yep. literally just being like, you go, I'm going to literally like stand up and, and cheer for them because they deserve it. This, they've put to, for in, in the time of this turbulence that is, you know, um, that is COVID, being able to have put events that people actually talk about that were great events that takes a lot that takes a lot of leadership so i want i'm proud of them i love it yeah i might actually have a tear here in this one because oh my god they've done big big love to you folks they've done so much yep. work absolutely oh god i cannot wait for kubecon i am so excited to be on premise uh and you will see us and we will be happy to talk to any and all of you Oh, uh, actually, and one, one other thing too. Oh. I want to come by the Stormforge booth and say what's up. You know, I just uh, if that's you know, you know, I just hang out with you all, and and you know, definitely, I'm gonna do that with a lot of my sponsors. Come back and just, but even beyond that, just to support you all, just to say what's up and see what's going on. I really like that aspect of it, just going and seeing people again and seeing like, okay, like you all have grown so much, like you know, just like the show has grown. So I'm really excited about like what you all are doing and stuff like that. So I, that's I'm definitely want to take the time to come and check out. And you should all check out Stormforge. Um, Noah does a great job, and you'll see it next week on the podcast. By the way, at Popcast Pop on Twitter, uh, Noah talks about the amazing stuff that uh, Stormforge you know is what they're doing. It's just it's it's good stuff. Yeah. So so for those of you who don't know, yesterday Pop was my year anniversary at Stormforge. I know it's gone by quick, Time right? Flies. And that means Noah's is not too far behind. A couple of weeks uh, now. Yeah. Uh, just to see the the evolution from where we were just a year ago to now is, I mean, it's, it's night and day. And I'm gonna, yeah, come by the booth because I'm gonna be doing something special at the booth. I don't know what yet, but uh, stop by and see. Might be a song and dance, might have a little hat on, something. Maybe have a little hat on. Irish jig. Irish jig, yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Rapid fire questions? Go for it. Oh, I, think I did the last one. I think this is, oh. Okay. Oh, wait, you did, yep, you do I'll, it. I'll do it. Okay, so we're subbing in our first question. We've been asking everybody the same questions, but we're subbing in because we already know your answer to the first question about pineapple on pizza. So we're not even gonna ask it. <laughs> so favorite pizza. Thank you, Carlos Panado, by the way, sent me this, this thing what we're, right there. <laughs> oh my and God. This. So every, <laughs> every background, just to like F with you all, every single show you, from, I don't know, like uh, 
march forward i've had this thing in the background just to <laughs> f with everybody so favorite pizza toppings i think we, we covered this before i'm kind of a plain i think um cheddarman responded it was a uh, uh kevin McAllister, you know from home alone I like plain pizza. Like it's plain. It's like, if you do, it's the perfect marriage of the sauce and the cheese. Right. So I'm a plain pizza person. Um, if the sausage is good or if it's like a meat lovers, I'll do that too. But by the way, I went to Detroit and shout out to the A2 mafia, the Ann Arbor folks, Detroit style was amazing. And we had this meat lover level pizza and I would, I'm still, I'm, I'm so blown away by it. So shout out to the crew. You know who you are in, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So that was not, that's a quick fire. Okay, we got to go to the next question, right? Okay. We can probably guess from what we see in front of us, favorite sports team. Um, In terms of favorite sports team in what sport though? Just, All time. just period. I mean, that's obvious. The New York Yankees, the greatest, the greatest team that's ever, ever competed in any sport <laughs> by championships. Okay. Favorite podcast episode. Don't do that to me. It's my, it's literally like, they're like, they're like my children. And there's no way I can say that's a favorite. I can tell you this, like in terms of like, in terms of just one that I was like, I never thought I'd get this person on. And, and, and I just took, you know, went out there and, and did, it was the, the person that created Plex because Plex is the reason that I'm in microservices. So Plex, if you all don't know, is like this multimedia server that you can, you know, back up stuff to. And, uh, and so like, basically like I had Elon, who's the guy that like created it. And I was like, someone, this is quick fire, but I love this, this, the, like this thing, but, you know, I call, I just was like, Hey man, I'd love to have you in the show response DMS me back. Sure. When do you need me on? I mean, that was just like, I, it was, it was one of those shot in the darks, right. You know, it was like it, it, that one. Um, in terms of like what the public likes, like, like I said, I, I just, I love that the, the Plex episode because of that, but he was just, could not be more gracious. I mean, it's obviously like Kelsey will kill it every single show he's every on. Time. Red beard is to me in mm -hmm. terms of it's still, it's my episode 13. There's so many Novotny. I can't, don't do this to me. All of them are amazing. All of them. All like, of them. To me, to that's, me. that's fair. That's fair. note made. <laughs> Pop loves them all equally. Favorite piece of technology, any tech. Huh. Oh, that's a good one. Um, God, it depends on the day, to be honest with you. Like right now, I love my camera. I just got the smaller camera. It's a ZV-1. It's a Sony ZV-1. I used to have this big A6600 with the long lens. This thing is incredible. Like, look, the quality is pretty decent, right? It's the same quality as the A6600 uh, Sony camera. So the, ca the cameras I'm loving. Um, my iPhone and my iPad, I just got the iPad Pro. Uh, I'm not an Apple guy, really. And it's just, just so convenient, right? Um, when uh, the last one, I'm sorry, like deviating, but like the, um, I really like like NVIDIA stuff, like NVIDIA cards, but all these crypto miners, like I've tried for the last six months to buy a card and they've just been either out of out yeah. or like astronomically. So my shows usually take about 30 minutes to render. And I, I have a card that's a 1080 TI, right? It's an old card. It's like four years old, right? my show would be able to get deployed in five minutes had I had this new one. I'm having to wait for these crypto folks to like not get like the 30 nineties and the latest ones and everything like that. So NVIDIA, if you're listening to this, throw your dog a bone here, dude. Come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, favorite open source project. Falco by far. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, look, Softball. so uh, let me explain. Kubernetes to me is the greatest community and the greatest open source project that has ever been, been in, 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 since inception. It is the greatest project in the world, not just for the technology, for the community. Every community that's, that's good in the world, in, is, it, to me, should be derived from, from what happened with Kubernetes. I pattern Falco community after Kubernetes on what I learned from Cody and from what I learned from Marky and whatever I learned from you all and from Gustus, all of that. I pattern that from that. And also like the other, you know, key maintainers are all the same mindset from that perspective. So um, like I said, I think, you know, Kubernetes is great, but in terms of the way that I, I always describe Falco these days is, is pretty much like what Kubernetes is, is the distributed computing. I feel Falco is the runtime security. 
and you all just go to falco.org if you can see more about it but i i think it's it's a great project for what it does we're the only runtime security tool tool that's in the uh the cncf landscape and i'm very very proud of it i'm very proud of not just the product or the project but the people we have a guy that in france he this guy's name is thomas he created sidekick which is this kind of uh, you know it's this daemon set kind of sidecar that'll take outputs and present it to anything you want, the Slack, Pager, Duty, even a beautiful UI. This dude in France did this on his own time. It's up to a million and a half downloads as of today, 40 different outputs, all because he took it and ran with it. So shout out to you, Thomas Lebarosius. You're, you're awesome. And I, I love all of the community. Like all these people are so freaking brilliant. I'm so excited to be part of it. Love it. Uh, favorite hobby? Huh. Um, do you even have time for hobbies? I don't even have time for hobbies, to be honest with you. But like when I did, like I, I was a big, I love playing games. Like at one point, like there wouldn't have been a season two of the podcast because I started playing Genshin Impact because, you know, like some folks were playing it. And you know what I'm talking about because it was in the chat. And I was like, I was like, I go, I got to quit this cold turkey or there's not going to be a seat. Like there was a point where it literally was like season two or play a little more Genshin Impact. And I'm like, okay. But I love like video games. My son likes video games too. So like he'll play, like he's, he's big into like, you know, um, plays a lot of, I got him a Sony P the PS five. So he plays around with that. So he's definitely like his old man. All right. Love to hear it. Last right. one. Favorite place to vacation. Oh, that's a really good one. Um, it really depends, man. I mean, obviously, you know, Italy was my favorite. I mean, it, Italy to me, because it's my mother, it's my motherland and, and my parents are from there and they're from the South of Italy. But like, you, you know, we, we, we did for the 10 year anniversary of me and my wife, we went there and we went to like Milan and we went to Florence and Rome and it was just, I, you know, I got to see the Mike, you know, the David, you know, the Michelangelo's David and you see that and you see, like the veins in the dude's hand and it, how beautifully sculpted it was. And it's none of that. The food is amazing. The people are really cool. So I love Italy. I will be there. I don't care. Like I want to go pretty, pretty quickly, but in terms of, um, I like Austin, Texas is cool. San Francisco's great. You know, I, I do it all. Fantastic. Just don't Shout like Boston. Don't, I want to go to Boston. No. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. I love Boston. I actually really do. I do. Uh, so that's it. That's all we got. Um, maybe just in case uh, people had no idea where they could find the podcast next week. Let's just give them one more. Where can they find the podcast? All you can follow us on Twitter at P O P C A S T P O P at podcast pop. There's a link in the, in the profile too. There's video and audio. So you can subscribe. So, or you can just like search through like Spotify or Apple music. If you're doing audio only for Popcast pop um, again, next week we have, or, for, or the week after whatever the thir October 3rd through 9th, we have an episode every single day. That's seven days um, yeah. leading up to KubeCon. Um, then we head to KubeCon. I get to see all your beautiful faces and your beautiful Looking faces. So love it. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, fellas. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being on. This being was a here. pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. Every time. Shout out to Stormforge. I love you all. Sponsors, but also just awesome people. You've always been such big supporters of Popcast. Shout out to, to Stormforge. I love you all. And we will see you on the Popcast next week. And we will see everyone else at KubeCon. Come visit us on the show floors and come find us around in the hallway track. We love you all. And we will see you then. Bye, everybody.